Well, welcome back now to uh, another episode of this series uh, that uh, deals with the uh, Trinity, and in, the, in particular this time we're talking about the person of the Holy Spirit. Last time we looked at a survey from the Scripture from the Old Testament to see for ourselves that the Holy Spirit is a person, the Holy Spirit is divine, and the Holy Spirit shares in the same divine attributes and the omni-attributes of God, meaning the Holy Spirit is omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. Let's look now at uh, the same thing from the New Testament perspective, meaning that the Holy Spirit also is a person, declared to us this way in the New Testament, which, which is basically a continuation of the declaration in the Old Testament, because Old Testament, New Testament, they complement one another, they complete each other, there is no contradictions whatsoever between the teaching found in Old Testament or the New Testament. So what does the New Testament tell us, for instance, about the Holy Spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit being divine, being a person, and he is uh, basically uh, one of the members of the Trinity, and he shares in the same omni-attributes. For instance, in Romans chapter 8, verses 26 to 27, this is what we read about the Spirit. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Obviously, we're talking about a person who helps us. That's why the Spirit is called the Helper, the Counselor. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us. We're groaning too deep for words. So the, the Spirit, basically, the Holy Spirit here is a person who knows our prayer because we. it says here, right here, it says that we do not know what to pray for. So this is the, cl uh, the clarification. We do not know what to pray for. So who knows what to pray for on our behalf? The Spirit himself, which means the Spirit is omniscient. He knows what's going on in our minds and our hearts, what we want to say. And he is also omnipresent. How do I know this? Well, this is speaking to the believers. So imagine you have a mul multitude of believers here in China, somewhere else. They're all praying at the same time. The Spirit is everywhere, and he will intercede on their behalf. Now, another thing about the Holy Spirit in Romans chapter 8, verses 9 to 11. This is what it says. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give you life. The Spirit is basically a giver of life. He is omnipotent. He will give life to who? To your mortal bodies, through his Spirit who dwells in you. In other words, the Spirit will renew our life from being dead away from Christ to being living in Christ, and also he will raise our bodies as well, the mortal bodies, uh, uh, when it's time for resurrection, basically, to come back to life, uh, to receive our rewards and uh, dwell with our Lord for all eternity. So the Spirit here obviously have the divine attributes of being omnipotent in this passage. Let's look at another passage. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. This is what we read. On a day of Pentecost, basically, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they, the believers, the apostles and others with them, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. Notice, some of the descriptions about the Holy Spirit is like he's a wind, basically. He's a spirit, right? And this wind, it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And then what happened? And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And notice, I mean, the emphasis here is there is multiple people in that place, but one spirit, basically, that came upon them. And they were all, right here, all filled with who? With one spirit, the Holy Spirit, which tells us, once again, that the Holy Spirit here is omnipresent, and because he gave him this power to speak in tongues as signs, basically, of the New Testament age, basically, and the Spirit uh, here is not only just omnipresent, but He is omnipotent as well. And He is omniscient. He knows who are the believers in this entire group. Therefore, uh, the Holy Spirit didn't come upon non-believers, but He came only on those believers. And how would you know this? Right here, it tells us they were all resting in one place. You see that? They rested Basically, in, and they were all sitting in one place, as we read in the passage uh, above it. And therefore, the Holy Spirit knew where they existed, came upon them. He filled all of them with this power. And therefore, we know now, based on this, that the Holy Spirit have these divine attributes. Let's look at another uh, place. 
Acts chapter 10, verses 19 to 20. And while Peter was pondering the vision, the Spirit said to him, notice what the Spirit did? The Spirit spoke to Peter. What does that make the Spirit? The Spirit of God? A person. And he began to speak to him and say, Behold, three men are looking for you. The Spirit knows that there are men that are looking for him. Omniscient, basically. Rise and go down and accompany them without hesitation, for I have sent them. Who sent them? The I here is the Holy Spirit. Omnipotent, basically. He has the power to send, basically. So we see all the omni attributes applied to the person of the Spirit here. Let's look at another example how Peter applied, basically, the divine attributes of God to the Spirit clearly in here. He says, But Peter said to Ananias, Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to who? Lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back from yourself part of the proceeds of the land. While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to who? You have lied to God. Who is God? The Holy Spirit. He says you lie to the Holy Spirit, you lie to God. That's where Peter a Jew who knows the Old Testament, who knows better not to apply uh, anything uh, uh, that applies to Yahweh to any other person, believes here, inspired by the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit and God are one and the same. This is what we see here in the scripture. Let's look also uh, here the Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 28 to 25, uh, 28 basically verse 25. This is what it says. Paul was reflecting basically on an Old Testament uh, a prophecy uh, that was uh, given in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 10. And in that prophecy, basically, the Lord was speaking. Here, I, uh, basically, Paul was inspired to say that it was the Holy Spirit who was speaking. And this is what he says. And disagreeing among themselves, that's the people that were listening to the gospel being preached by Paul, they disagreed. They departed after Paul has made one statement. The Holy Spirit was right in saying to your fathers through Isaiah the prophet. So he made a reference that it was the Holy Spirit who made this prophecy that was mentioned in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 10. And here it is. Here is the, uh, uh, the reference to that. Here in Isaiah chapter 6, we read this. Isaiah is saying, And I, Isaiah, heard the voice of who? The Lord saying. It was the Lord who was speaking to Isaiah. But Paul says it was the Holy Spirit, which means God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and one and the same. And this is why it is important for us basically to notice this. And notice in this whole thing, uh, in this passage, when he heard the voice of the Lord speak, and look what the Lord says, whom shall I, singular, send, and who will go for us, plural. And that's another indication about the plurality basically in the oneness of God. Hopefully this particular uh, series now and uh, in, uh, in particular this survey from the New Testament speaking about the person of the Holy Spirit has been helpful to you as you combine it also with the one before this which was a survey from the Old Testament. Simply the point I'm trying to make is this. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is divine. The Holy Spirit is God. And the Holy Spirit has all the omni attributes and the divine attributes of God as demonstrated by the scripture itself.